the 15th of July and we were off once again another on another ride vlog for another ride in another ride vlog <laughs> Definitely in the lineup. This is one of the uh, uh, let's go back to the puzzle analogy. It's one of the edges that you can construct in the lineup because he is comparable enough within history to some of the earlier understandings of how things ended up working out. Now his world, you need to understand, his world is falling apart. And it's, ironically enough, these anarchists who call themselves in the postmodern sense, these are deconstructionists. Well, they're tearing his work through pieces. But see, deconstruction hasn't been isn't anything new. Deconstructionism has been around for a long time. And this is where he makes his mistake. He talks to these people that he views our experts and then makes pronouncements that don't simply wash out in history. And I'm not talking about textbook history. I'm talking about there are credible sources that show if you understand why the Nazis chose swastika, you'll understand that the Jews were simply the mere... The, 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 the Jews were the pretext for everything they did. And that there's actually a history behind it, but the, the history of eugenics. And this eugenics program is, again, in, as he said before, you can see things in culture. Well, what is in culture? Well, there's Spider-Man, X-Men, and a large number of the comics were all, all, all along the lines of mutation, including the Hulk. Well, that's all eugenics. So the eugenics program, in terms of the culture, has been there, uh, well, <laughs> since, since, since the comic creator Stan Lee uh, brought Spider-Man into existence, basically. And so, it, it's been around for a long time, and you'll, you'll see, uh, in, in, in comics and in cartoons, not only will you see the eugenics program, you'll see the eugenics side of it. But you'll also see, uh, particularly now, an emphasis on gnosis. So there's a lot there that are that is not sort of uh, within the official books of history that you can go to and take a look at and see how things were actually working out. But that's it. It's not within f official history. You have to go outside the official history. And you have to piece the information together. Cause that's that, that, that's how it works. It's, it's it's pieced together information. And then I'll talk about 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 a uh, about uh, I talk about uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, oh, putting a puzzle together. Because you're collecting information in bits and pieces. You don't specifically have the logical reasoning. Or a, what's called a fully structured history. I mean, if you go into understanding the history of Europe, you go into understanding, let's say, this whole, the whole thing of, Ma uh, uh, of Macedonia, they put a whole thing on Macedonia. And a lot of people, oh yeah, yeah, there is a Macedonia. When you tell them there is no Macedonia, they get very upset. But the thing is, is they talk about Philip of Macedon. Well, it just looks like problems. There was no Macedon. There was no Macedonia for there to be a Philip of Macedon. There is no Macedonia at the time of Philip, Alexander the Great's father. Why isn't there? Why isn't there in Macedonia? Well, it's very simple. 
because it was uh, during um, the conquest of Alexander the Great that he gave the area of what is now Macedonia to his general. But it's, it's under Alexander the Great that you have the Hellens. The Hellens, the Hellens, the Hellenic Empire was created by Alexander the Great. So what would you say? Was he, was he Greek or Macedonian? He was Greek because he created the Hellenic Empire. His advisor was Aristotle. You don't know if you don't understand this in history, then you don't understand that the history of the history of Macedonia. You don't understand why you can't have Philip uh, the Great being, you know, uh, follow Alexander's uh, uh, um, Alexander the Great's uh, 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 father. Why he can't be Philip of Macedon because the Macedon doesn't doesn't exist at that time. The general to give that the name, the, the general that the, that the area is named after, was given to the general of Alexander the Great's army, did not exist at that particular point in time. And the thing is, you go look at these areas, you know, what is Macedonian, who are the Macedonians? And you'll see that the, 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 the mountainous regions there, the Urals, the Transvaal, the, 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 uh, uh, this is where you have Serbia, you have Bulgaria. There is an ancient history, there's a huge history, I mean, who are the Carpathians? I know there was uh, several, several Bulgarians who will claim uh, descendancy from, from the Carpathians. This is why I know, I know several, several Afghans. Musicians who understood that their music was Greek, that they were Hellenic. Because Alexander the Great had gone that far, he went all the way into the area of Punjab, actually down to the Ganges. So the, these factors, these, these factors come into history. But if you you haven't sat down and done the bits and pieces work, and I don't think that, uh, even though he says he is, Lionel is not of the personality that who will sit down and do the, all the nitty gritty. He will notice things here and there. But he doesn't get into the nitty gritty. He, he occasionally does a deep. Now he's using, the, he's using the term deep dive now. I often talk about the deep dive, and he said, yeah, most people, most people, the, the, the large share of these wolf people, don't and won't do the deep dive. They won't do what's necessary. The deep dive is not easy. It's not easy, say, you know, looking at something, say, oh, it's going to be five minutes, and then, you know, this is about eight o'clock in the evening, I want to do something small, and then by, uh, next thing you realize it's now uh, two o'clock in the afternoon so in other words you've spent more than more than 12 hours oh. a bit of a problem with the turning signals there so you spent now you've spent close to 12 12 hours if not more uh, doing a deep dive because you know You spent all night you know, doing the research truck following the trail. That's what happens. Sometimes you follow the trail into a good archive. Uh, you have to get the information out of that archive fast enough because it's not going to be there for There are archives that, that, that pop up on the internet are there for maybe a week or so and then they're gone. Sometimes the shortest ones I've seen, they're, they're up for maybe 48 hours and then within 48, you know, and then they're gone. Oh.
happens is that in the, in the, when he objects to the term uh, common, he objects to the term uh, Leninist I mean, and the leftists. Understand that the left is the left because they're part of the left hand path. And you'll see this in Dostoevsky, and Dostoevsky does gives you the best yeah. description of communism. You want to know what's going on, right? What's going on today? Where the history is, you want to find its context, and you need to read Dostoevsky, particularly Brothers Karamazov, uh, The Idiot, The Possessed, and then the final one is Crime and Punishment. Crime and Punishment will put things together for you in a manner that you will not under that, that understand that we are now in a period of, of, of complete chaos. And this is by design. They want this chaos. They view the chaos as progress. And this is actually from the left-hand path. Again, you're going, in, going outside of the intellectual sphere into notions. And that's where you'll find the swastika. between two days because I came in uh, on the Thursday and today is Saturday. I'm leaving on the Saturday because uh, Thursday night I came in there was a bad rainstorm and wasn't able to ride back. So we are riding back currently. But anyways, uh, we're going to continue on with our our deep dive research of the notes anyways. These are the notes into uh, what's going on. Looks like I might get a little wet and it's starting to rain. Oh. And it, a lot of LeBron fits in as you begin to do a deep dive research. You want to to put some of the areas together. It's a comparison to other people like Voltaire, Hegel, um, Newton, Leibniz, Planck. This is the, the particular that we're looking at. Because the way it comes into play is that this, this is what forms Europe to a certain degree. It's called the intellectual part of Europe. The world we're sitting in today is, is a consequence of Voltaire who did his work based on the work of these particular people. So Voltaire didn't do his own work, he kind of copied people. But he didn't copy Planck because Planck came after, uh, as a side note, Planck came after uh, Voltaire. Planck is sort of the last piece of the puzzle. And it kind of pulls you back a little bit into the Gnostic sphere because Planck reconnects Planck reconnects science with metaphysics so metaphysics and physics come back together again with Planck although not in the public eye in the public eye, science continues to evolve as master, along with mathematics, in the world of gnosis, uh, and more particularly not in the world of gnosis, but actually in the world of, of what we call the atheistic world, the humanist world. And that's where Voltaire was. Voltaire was basically a humanist. He understood the world from a humanistic perspective, not that without without God. And this evolved into atheism. Now the thing is, is that that doesn't necessarily mean the people who were involved in atheism or, or, or so-called the social engineering of the world, these humanists 
certainly involved in that. It doesn't mean they didn't get involved with the, uh, sort of the Gnostic world. The Gnostic world was already, always there, sort of in the background. The Gnostic world was always, as Lionel uh, 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 Rump puts it, because you can't identify the shadow government, you can't identify the black world, and it, it's in the, the, uh, the world, the, the existence of the Gnostic world. I understand the Gnostic world, and you'll begin to understand a lot of the working behind the scenes that uh, nobody really ever talks about. And this includes the uh, whole thing, this whole thing about UFOs. If you want to know about UFOs, you have to understand why the Nazis chose the swastika as their symbol. Because there's a whole part of it, and it, this includes uh, a sort of a meeting with you know, a sort of called extraterrestrial intelligence. Uh, what you want to call it, but he's called the multiverse aliens. And that's what this involves. And I think this is why it was not specifically, the Jews weren't specifically the target of World War II. Uh, there were six, six million people. Out of, out of the dead, there's six million Jews dead uh, as compared to a hundred million for the rest of you know, World War II. Uh, so they were, they were under 10%, but there are those who wish, and this is where Lionel refers to these, some of these historians that are his friends, and I'll get into that, let's do a side note here in terms of his, his understandings of communism, why he's so opposed to it. So communism is in many ways a spectrum disorder, almost like autism. Just because you know two or three people who are communists or Marxists doesn't necessarily mean you understand the entire spectrum. You understand one or two people and you have a perspective. It's not until you get enough perspectives that you begin to understand what's actually going on. And I never said that you, the communist is the truth. The communi communism is a belief. And there are a lot of different variations in belief, just the way you have a lot of different denominations within Christianity, you have a lot of different denominations within communism, and they are all beliefs. There has never been, this is what Planck, Planck introduced the reason why you can never prove atheism. Atheism is always going to be a belief, it's going to be a religion. The same thing with science. A lot of the stuff we call it science today isn't science, it's religion. It's about what you believe. And this is what the whole creation of the social justice warrior. That's what this is all about. It's about enforcing a religious belief, a religious set of rules, religious morality. But again, Lionel doesn't go into them because he's limited. He's, he's limited in terms of what he can do. He says he does more on, on his uh, on his on his dot com thing, on his private site. But the thing is. Uh, there's no need to pay for it if, if if it's the same stuff that I'm doing, which is for free. And the thing is, a lot of stuff you can't get for free. The information isn't locked up behind the subscription walls. It's out there and often more often than free. It's just not in advertised places on the internet. You have to know how to do a deep dive research. You have to know how to do deep dive research uh, using the internet in order to get this information. And I think I spent 30 years doing this, just doing the research. And the, the best definition of communism comes around to Dostoevsky, who, who, who places these reformers as idiots and possessed. And he refers to them as being demonically possessed. And this is exactly what, the, what comes up in Crime and Punishment. Is, is, is illustrated beautifully in the character who, near the end, prior to the suicide, the ultimate act, the ultimate act of supremacy, is to randomly, randomly kill people for no particular reason. In other words, there's no reason for what they're doing. It's just complete random destruction. And at the end, the final, the final act, the final act of supremacy to kill yourself, to destroy yourself. And this is actually is exactly what pops up in left-hand pathnosis. Is first, and this is pop, this pops up in, you know, 
comic comic book things that you have Thanatos and you know and and a lot of these sort of these characters of uh, sort of these these supernatural characters is you see a large chunk of this this Gnostic understanding uh, coming out and saying that that, that the end end world is going to be in chaos. Chaos is is the last chaos is the last act of self before you have self destruction. And this is what we're seeing. What, what is what is what is Lionel describing? He, he's describing the random destruction of everything around you. And there's no particular reason you can't define it because it's random. But the thing is, you can define it because it's been defined as the left-hand path. This is communism. Communism emerges from the left-hand path. Now, why isn't there a right? Because the right really didn't exist. The Christian right, the real Christian right, disappeared and was removed from the historical record by the, the advent of the Holy Roman Catholic Empire. That was about a thousand AD. They just simply deleted everything. So a large chunk of the Eastern Christianity is not even known. But what, what happens, what emerges, is a new Christianity one that is extremely violent and is well within the, within the framework of, 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 of Gnosis. It's within the Gnostic, we call the, the Gnostic spectrum. So again, you talk about uh, communism being a spectrum. Well, Gnosis is a spectrum. Same thing as social. Social is you have a, a spectrum, so you can't define it, define it specifically as one thing. And this is the sort of thing that when you hear a simplistic term or a simplistic definition of something that is a lot more complex, the person hasn't looked very far and they're not gonna, going to look very far uh, because in many cases it's going to clash with who they are, their self-identity. And most people will not challenge their own sense of identity.